Okay, some of the neat stuff coming out next year. I told you in the last video that it's Nikon's 100th anniversary next year. Nikon is going to come out with uh, a full frame version of the Nikon D500. But it's not going to be a D810 replacement. It's going to kill off the 610 and the D750. Nikon was, is very happy to get rid of the D750. It's going to use the same sensor as the Nikon D5. It's basically going to be like the Nikon D3 and the D700 were. The D700 was, uh, and I own both of those cameras too, by the way. The D700 was just a very slightly dumbed down, very slightly, version of the Nikon D3. So it's going to be the D760 or the D780. Um, since it's their 100th anniversary, I've been told it's going to be the Nikon DM, uh, which would be a digital mirrorless. Uh, the Nikon DF was killed off. So uh, some of the stylizing on basically like a full frame version of the Fuji X-T2 except with less manual dial integration as the Fuji X-T2 is. So uh, the anniversary uh, camera for uh, Nikon is going to be a full frame mirrorless camera. The zeitgeist and the corporate ethos of Nikon absolutely necessitate it as almost pure religion, um, a pure... Uh, you know, uh, pure substrate to the Nikon fabric that Nikon, you know, in the Shinto fashion, is going to uh, give hey! <laughs> representation to a hundred years of Nikon corporate. And Nikon has got a big, as a as a big, uh, you know, big present in their back pocket, waiting to pop on everybody for 2017. And I'm told that's what it is: full frame mirrorless. That's Nikon. Um, Fuji. There's a few things that I'm waiting for. And I, uh, Fuji, uh, according to the folks at uh, Fuji Rumors, um, who has now confirmed it over and over again, Fuji is going to announce a replacement for the X100T. In January, it's going to be the X100F, which is obviously going to be a 24 megapixel sensor, a much faster autofocus. I don't know if it'll have a touch screen. Thank God it will not have a flippy screen. A lot of uh, idiots uh, don't realize why people that love the rangefinder style you know, don't want a damn flip screen on their X100T replacement. They, they're just clueless. It's like, well, why not? More is better. Yeah, sure. More is better than I should stick a satellite dish on my car, you know? Um, so the X100F announced in January to be released, who knows when, April, May, June. Um, the lens that I'm waiting for for certain is the Fuji 80mm macro. Obviously, the big news from Fuji will be the GFX release. Most people are not very familiar with the medium format. Uh, medium format film and medium format digital is, is the same crap. Autofocus speed is basically not important. It is a very, very hardcore uh, staged product photography, commercial photography, corporate photography, business photography, fashion photography, some really high-end portraiture. Autofocus speed doesn't matter for jack shit. Some people don't get that fact about medium format. Most people never use medium format. So that'll be the big one for Fuji's, the GFX, which means that they'll crucify everybody in one fell swoop. It's a fact. I mean, all these super expensive uh, medium formats uh, within one fell stroke, instead of like making a full frame camera. And why doesn't Fuji make a full frame camera? It's like, there's a reason why Fuji, and I've made a video on this before already, Fuji has no interest in making a goddamn full frame camera. Then they'd be fighting Nikon. Then they'd be fighting Sony. Then they'd be fighting uh, Canon. That is just epic stupid. There's no way Fuji is that stupid. They, of course they're not going to make a full frame camera. Why? Because in one fell stroke with one damn camera, Fuji with their GFX will slaughter and crucify and stick everybody's head on a pike, figuratively, with the medium format GFX. Why the hell would you want to fight a battle with three huge companies like Nikon, Con, uh, Nikon, Canon, and Sony? You bring out a me you bring out a digital medium format, and you've just screwed everybody. As Nikon just did an end, I mean, excuse me, Fuji will do a complete end run, which the camera is coming out. We know it's there. We know what it's going to cost. Basically, we know most things about it. A lot of people have handled it. Most of you don't need it. You want it, but you don't really need it, okay? Let's be honest. Are you a product photographer, commercial photographer? Court? No, you're not. You'd love to have it, but you don't need it. A lot of people that don't need it at all are going to buy it. That makes Fuji very happy, too, obviously.
They want your money. They don't care who buys it. Um, but in that one uh, single run, Fuji just crucified everybody. Very, very brilliant move on Fuji's part. And that is why Fuji is not making a full-frame camera. It's stupid. They went, they get, they'd enter a war that they can't win. They can't. Why the hell do it? Let's just come out with one camera and slaughter everybody's ass. Medium format, that's exactly what Fuji does. People don't get it. Um, so, that's Fuji. Uh, the big news from uh, Sony, and this information was released a few days ago, is Kodak uh, discovered, uh, created a technology in 2007 which uses a white pixel. It's basically like Fuji X-Trans sensor, uh, except the arrangement is different, but uh, it's going to be a special sensor array, and it's going to be a white pixel uh, sensor technology. And uh, it's going to have regular RGB uh, photo sites, but also going to be smattered in there kind of like a Fuji's X-Trans, are going to be, uh, in this case, a very unique photo site uh, that's white. It means it is receptive, receptive to any and all frequencies of visible, electromagnetic, and invisible, infrared, ultraviolet. However, it's going to have a pass filter like every other camera. It's going to be receptive to everything. And what this does is it means that uh, Sony's new sensor for its A7R3 is going to have bat crap crazy low noise straight out of camera high iso performance just they'll just blow the blow the blow the nuggets off of everybody else it's like you don't like sony well just tell the facts you know i told you all these camera companies are always uh whatever they release that's five years ago for them so if it's a new product for you it's five six years ago for them i've been telling you all this crap you know since day one Kodak came up with this in 2007. 2007, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So that is going to be the uh, the latest, greatest technology from uh, Sony and their A7R3. And then what Sony's going to do is they're going to boast there is nobody on planet Earth that can even step close to us when it comes to insane, crazy ass. High ISO, low noise. I mean, there will be nothing within a million miles of the output of this sensor. It will obviously require Lightroom and other uh, raw file, interpre uh, raw file uh, interpreters are going to have an issue. There's going to have to be new software, new. <laughs> There's going to have to be some serious plugins and new firmware and software uh, updates. Excuse me, new software updates to process the raw files from this uh, new sensor. But you know, who gives a crap about that? No big deal. Um, so that's uh, that's Sony's big uh, secret in their pocket. You could actually Google that. I don't know if I still have the link. I got sent the link, and it's on the official page. However, the mention uh, of the Kodak invention of this sensor technology is on DP Review, and it dates to 2007. So that's uh, Sony's big uh, secret in their back pocket for 2017. They're going to say, Sony, the new A7R3, we blow the crap out of everybody else in low, no low, bleh, low noise, low light, high SO performance. Nobody even comes close. And they will be right. <laughs> However, i got no issue using noise reduction software either. But if you could eliminate that step, that's fine. Obviously, other people will probably integrate that sensor technology as time rolls on. Obviously so. I've seen uh, test examples. There's a couple test examples of regular bear sensor next to the new uh, white pixel sensor, um, and uh, the noise difference is radical. So that is what is in store for the year 2017, along with miscellaneous lenses and who knows what else. The winner next year is probably going to be uh, Fuji and uh, Nikon. Since Nikon has been planning these Easter eggs in their back pocket now for years and years, because the corporate zeitgeist, the uh, corporate ethos, is not going to allow 2017 to be anything less than a, one of those holy shit moments, you know, like a company like comes out with a product and everybody goes, oh my god, that's what Nikon is planning for their 100th uh, anniversary next year. You can count on that crap. Hardcore, you can count on that to be true. Count on it. Like the sun rising in the east, you can count on that crap happening next year with Nikon. Period. No dispute, end of story, damn it. 
No dispute. And nobody else is mentioning this crap but me. Why the hell is that? You know? Uh, I read lots of books by, uh, on Japanese philosophy, and, uh, uh, you know, I know the... You know the the premise and the mindset of uh, of the Shinto and uh, the Japanese, uh, uh, you know, uh, Taiki. No, I don't live in Japan, but I mean, even the Japanese people will tell you it's like, yeah, hundredth anniversary has to be big, must be big year. <laughs> even those, even the Japanese will tell you, yeah. So you expect awesome stuff from Nikon next year. It might be awesome stuff that you don't like, but, it, but Nikon at least is going to think that it's huge. It may be huge, but let's see if it's huge that we like versus huge we don't like. That obviously remains to be seen. So, Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you later. Okay? Bye.